Hello today. Hi everyone. I'm today I'm going to be talking about uh, dating advice for women. Uh, if you keep seeing me look down, it's because I've just got notes. I am I feel a bit weird reading from a screen. A lot of these or a few of these could be applicable to to men as well. But in this day and age, there's a good chance that they would make more sense being applied to women because of this the current status quo okay number one never become financially dependent on them it's probably just a good rule across the board not to be financially dependent on anyone people tend to be more financially dependent obviously in the early years and then on their families but i would say to women be really careful about giving over your the financial decision making and your faith and the responsibility over to the man or the man in your life um reason being that is a major source of i'm just going to use the word power it's a it's one of the biggest sources of power and a very huge bargaining chip now it sounds all like business but relationships are give and take and they should be about sharing and interchanging but basically give and take between each other with various different things and this is not too different from business so things need to be fair right but i think one of the biggest mistakes that women today even make is giving over financial responsibility to the male understandably back in the old days in last generation uh, the traditional couple married couple would be the male main wage earner and then the female housewife right and and this made sense at the time he would bring home the money and then often she would spend a large portion of it on the the, the duties and the needs within the home okay but if you are a female nowadays like if if to girls growing up if i if i could reach out to girls growing up you cannot be financially dependent upon the male because no matter how good he is even if he's the best male in the world things happen circumstances change feelings may change and many men out there especially in recent generations they are used to a constantly changing world upgrades on everything right or women too upgrades on everything and that could mean an upgrade on you right never ever count yourself as so special that you are indispensable indispensable means you're you're not throw awayable to a man to whom you are dependent unless he has great feelings or great a great feeling of loyalty or duty it's not ex it's not very common these days that that will carry all the way through maybe some very good men out there will stick will stick to it and they'll continue to take care of things and supply for you you taking care of the home or the children etc but these generations in this world at the moment with so much choice available for products for things for lifestyles partners keep this in mind this is not the world of before this is a world of ultimate choice every second of the day this is all also now the world of available porn right so it's very important that you maintain your financial independence you you create a career for yourself you create 
a fallback. You create your financial backbone so that you are not dependent on another party. I'm not, uh, in this video, I'm saying men, but any other party, it is important that you are able to support yourself because anything could happen. People are fickle. People change their minds. And then where would you be when that person changes their mind or circumstances change? You cannot depend on them. And no matter what romantic story or what wonderful future mm, dream is cooked up by anyone around you, know that at any moment anything can change. Nothing is really stable. But at least what what you can do is try to be in as much control of your own finances as you can. Be wary of giving over your power to another person, especially financially. I mean, this is food, this is shelter, right? You can't be believing in fairy stories anymore. You can't be believing in the old, um, what is it, uh, when, you know, princess, prince go through a bunch of stuff, finally get together, they get married, and then they live happily ever after. There's, there isn't any such thing. Maybe things are comfortable for a long time, or comfortable until people die, but essentially, being financially stable is your main bargaining chip. That is your your way out. It is your, it is your rescue. What am I? I'm looking for the word for risk. A net that you fall into. If you you're walking along a tightrope and then you fall down, the net catches you. That net is called a. It's your escape route. Your financial independence is your escape route. Should you ever decide, whoa, this is not working for me, or whoa, he's he's turning out to be a totally different human being than I thought he was. This is your escape route and it's your safety net. That's the word I wanted. I wanted safety net. It's your safety net. It's your escape route. It's your option out of there. It's as clear, it's as, clear as that can be. It's your option out there. It's your choice. It is because money, essentially, what ma many people attribute to many things to money. But ultimately, at the end of the day, money offers you choice essentially. And where would you be without choice? <sighs> a very sad, dark place. Mm. And then you have to not only think of yourself, you have to think of also like your, if you have any kids. Okay, if you're financially independent, then, you know, they could be covered too. You can get them out of there as well. It's very important. And it's a main bargaining chip. Like if if a person knows as well that you are dependent on them, then they know, ah, oh, I can start to relax. I can start to do whatever I like. She's not going anywhere. She can't go anywhere. How can she? You know, like even either it's uh, either out of laziness or out of malice. And I'm, I'm not saying all men are like this, but, you know, things just happen through life. And if, if it comes down to... Um, taking the path of least resistance, maybe just couldn't be asked anymore. Maybe he lost interest or something. Maybe he couldn't be asked to do things anymore. So he just starts getting lazier and lazier. And then you can nag and you can ask and you can cajole. But at the end of the day, I mean, you're, you're stuck there at his mercy. He pays for everything. He pays for the house. He pays for food. However he treats you, well, where are you going to go? Are your mom and dad nearby? Are they? Do you have good enough friends there, close enough friends that you can just leave and go and stay with them? Mm. So number one, it's essential that you maintain your financial independence. It is a happy dream that someone else will always take care of you. It's a happy dream. Know that to be true. Basically, you're putting yourself in a very precarious position by doing this. Precarious. And depending on your situation, it could actually be a little dangerous. 
because if if the financial responsibility and the financial clout lies with your partner if they have bad or dodgy money management skills you could come out of this really poorly and as we all know relationships don't always work out very well and then if they're in a better position to you and then they they've got a, a grudge they hold a grudge or they're um they're resentful to you and they want to like get you back or take revenge or something like that they could do it financially or they could do it by withholding something that you're due or that could really help you if things were fairer yeah and the thing is if you think about any any dealing with money basically time is really helping you right and so if over time they have consistently bad money management skills and both your accounts are linked or yours are somehow tied to theirs they could really take you down financially if you're not keeping aware of things and if you don't have a close eye on things it happens <laughs> And, and let me add, they might not even be doing this and aware of it. They might be completely unaware of how they're damaging things or how their habits are really hurting both of your situations. Their actions are non-malicious. They're not doing it on purpose. It's just probably a habit that they've had their entire lives due to certain attitudes towards money or... Um, attitudes about getting it or attitudes about the kind of people that have a handle on it you know ineffectual ineffectual I should have said ineffectual money management skills it, you know they might just be one of those people that just don't want to look at what what's going on and you know just let things pan out and then whatever's left over then they're happy or you know they'll deal with it then um, so much so that you might find they're actually a liability and that's a financial term you know assets are things that give you gain liabilities or dangers and risks that can bring you down and people can actually certain people can turn out to be certain liabilities just by their habits alone and whether that's um, monetary or um, otherwise the way they treat people or the way they behave, some people surely are a liability. I mean, I've dated a few liabilities and I only learned to realize this later. Precarious is definitely the word. There is something to be said for self-preservation because when people are in a romantic arrangement, the idea is that you'll just give all for each other, you'll, you'll, you'll cover each other's bases, etc. But what often happens is the other person will realize that you're willing to do that for them. And they'll just start to chill and maybe revert to their previous habits with the, the mind that you're the responsible one. You'll cover their bases. You're okay. So you'll cover the both of you in the future. And this puts them in the child position and that now makes you the one who's got to, you know, repair any damage down the line. Self-preservation. Yes, have a partnership. Yes, be in a fantastic relationship, etc. But watch your back with this. Watch your back with this. Money is the elephant in the room that nobody really feels comfortable talking about with relation to uh, relationships. So I was going to say num my number two would be don't count on other people, not your children. Don't count on other people at your level as your rock. The same way related to the finance, don't depend on them too much for something. I, re I read an interesting quote or saying the other day. Be careful of expecting yourself from 
others in the world because it might not be forthcoming. The way you are, maybe you're a very kind, sweet, nice person and you give of yourself a lot. So you think, ah, I give of myself a lot out there. Um, it should come back. That's a nice way to think, but many people are just not like that. So whatever you give to them, you might be giving into a black hole or an energy vampire. I'm, I'm not saying like a real vampire. I'm talking about the kind of person you put your energy into and it just keeps going in and not much comes out for you in kind. So if you're hoping like, oh, I'm so kind and I'm so nice and I keep doing things for this other person, they're, they're going to reciprocate. There is no guarantee of that. There is no guarantee. Uh, there's no rules written up about this. Maybe there's these rules that we assume in our brains or something we learn, you know, like from the Bible. I think anyone who has Christian background or Christian reference, we know that uh, that, that saying, or well, that's, I'm not sure what you'd call it. It's basically a phrase or a sentence, statement saying, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? But the thing is, not everyone's on this page. Not everyone's on this page. And not everyone knows how you would like to be treated. So maybe you're treating people really nicely in the way that you would like to be treated. But very frequently, they can't read your mind. They don't want to talk to you, but maybe they, they're not going to respond in kind to you the same way. So if you're giving a lot of energy, doing a lot of things, putting a lot into a person, expecting a solid foundation back from them, that might be a mistake in your or our thinking. Uh, don't depend too much on people to be your rock or your stability. That needs to be you. You need to be your own safe space. You need to be your own rock. Um, three. <laughs> don't move in together. <laughs> I don't know if this is helping anyone out there, but if I would say, like, if you're a girl and you're growing up, if you're a teenager, you're growing up, if you're a young woman and you've begun dating, okay, this is for you. It's also for those who are also in a couple, maybe you're in, in a home already, you share a home, you're sharing with a man. Um, this is for you too, because, I mean, you can plan from here onwards, you know, nothing, nothing is, nothing is forever, nothing's stuck. You can always begin to change your circumstances. So, yes, I will reiterate, don't move in together. Uh, everybody needs their own space. Children, yes, I mean, if children are with you, you have, you're have you taking care of them. They're, they're your kids, they're with you. Okay, but moving in the beginning, moving in, in together with a man. It's never worked out for me. Maybe I'm a I'm a special case. You can you can prove you you can prove me wrong. You can uh, you can put your comments down here and tell me what you think. Maybe I'm wrong, but in my opinion, if this was advice that I was giving somebody else, another girl, another woman, or my own daughter, I would say, don't move in together. The thing is. We all build up our own identities and um, it that takes years and it you you need to be on your own for a certain extent of your time to know what you are and what you want from life and where you're going. If you are always around another person or you're always like living in each other's pockets, that sense of yourself can get eroded. Maybe some people are okay with this, but if you live together, that sense of your own identity is going to dissipate a bit and start to become something else. It's going to start to become maybe more of what the other person wants. And then is that what you want ultimately? From my own perspective, I am a very adaptable, mutable person. Uh, if you if you want to know, I'm a 
a Gemini. I adapt to things. And I'm not saying this is directly correlated to my star sign. I'm just saying for those who are interested. But just as a person on my own, I'm very adaptable, very versatile. I can adapt to and change according to the circumstances. And I'm very accommodating to people around me. I even pick up on accents very quickly. Um, and whoever I'm with, I mean, it must be very nice for the average the, the person that I'm with it's because I adapt very quickly to them. I accommodate them very, very quickly, no matter what they're doing. So whatever the type they are, but it must be very nice for them on the receiving end to have a person who's so accommodating and so adaptable and so easy to be around. But then on my side, they're not usually doing the same thing for me. In fact, maybe my own ideas seem a little like far-fetched to them or a little bit like out of out of the tree or, you know, you're so open-minded, your brains might fall out kind of thing. I've heard that before. Um, I don't know. Maybe I just seem to be attracted or they're attracted to me or, or it's fate or something. I just keep coming together with um, people who are rather close-minded in certain areas and then I'm usually the way open-minded one and then I adapt to their circumstances and their way of thinking and their habits but they don't adapt to mine and then I find I'm being hemmed in I'm being held in check I can't entirely be myself around them I, I do find this when I'm in a relationship I have to I free them up. They feel very free around me, but I don't feel free around them. I can't talk about all the things I want to talk about. I can't speak aloud my my thoughts. I can't. I can't do that. I'd be criticized. I'd be um, I'd be dismissed. Uh, I would. You know, my thoughts would just be a little bit like. I I know they just set them aside. It'd just be like, oh, come on, let's talk about something realistic now. So it'd just be. I'd just be constantly going. Oh, okay. So for this reason, for me, it's a really bad idea to move in with uh, another person, especially someone I'm dating. Maybe a roommate. A roommate is okay because in that sense, you both respect each other as separate. They have their life, you have yours. But if you are in a dating relationship, like romantically connected, that means you sort of now you, in the beginning, you want to hang out together, and later on, you're sort of obligated because there's this dating status between you, right? And so that's where it comes in. Like, if you're dating and you're living together, you're a couple, you spend time together, and the, the stronger one of the two, the stronger or the more, the one with the bigger ego or the one who thinks they're more, their ideas are more relevant or whatever. In my case, it usually seems to be the male that thinks this. I don't know if it's the same with you. That one is going to dominate the, the environment, the thought environment, the way you communicate, what you do, what you wind up doing. So for me, like I mentioned, it's, extru it's a, a very bad idea to move in with one because basically I'm stunting myself. I'm stunting my own development and mental growth I find I'm always hemming myself in I'm always censoring what I say and carefully thinking about what I can talk about or yeah essentially I'm not sure it's if it's going to be the same with other people maybe uh, more women out there are more strong and dominating of things but for those on the softer side of or the more timid or shyer spectrum or more accommodating those women out there who are very accommodating and very sweet and very nice, you be careful of this. Be careful of moving in with someone else in a, in a romantic setting, especially if they have a, a strong personality and have very fixed ideas on how the world works. Um, in a nutshell, I feel like I, I'm, if, if I were in uh, the, those circumstances, if I was living with someone like that in those circumstances, I would wind up feeling like I was wasting my time because a lot of time, so much time is spent in my head thinking, oh, I should say this, or I can say that, 
well, I shouldn't say this. Is this how I want to be spending the time in my life, my very limited short life on this earth? Sort of censoring my thoughts and going, I, I can say this, I, I should not say that. Really? I... There's things I want to be doing with my life, and the part if my the partner in my life is cutting me off from a whole bunch of things that I could be thinking or doing or exploring, do I really want them there anymore? Kind of thing. But the thing is, I do I do appreciate the the connection, the the closeness, the affection, and everything else that comes with it. So this is why I'm saying. Maybe we can have these things. We can have the relationship. We can have the closeness. We can have the affection and everything that goes with it. But maintain yourself. Don't lose yourself to them. This is important. And it's also important for your kids to see this. It's important for your kids to see this. I think it's very important that my daughter sees that I maintain my identity. I maintain myself. I maintain who I am. I maintain what it was I did before that made my made me more of me or the things that I love doing those just didn't dissipate just because I got into a romantic relationship be careful of that yeah uh next one point four don't begin or start something that you can't or don't want to ultimately continue don't begin or start something that you can't or don't indefinitely want to continue. What I mean by this is like in the beginning of a, a relationship, many people are on like best behavior kind of thing. You know, like on the guy's side, he might bring gifts, flowers, chocolates, take a girl out to eat dinner, picnics, etc. You know, talk to her a certain way. On the girl's side, she might you know, place is always immaculate when he comes over. Uh, she always has something that she can offer him in terms of amazing cooking or, you know, she tries to cook. She tries to, you know, um, she goes to the gym a lot or he goes to the gym a lot, that kind of thing. Doing something that you wouldn't normally do. That This is what I'm talking about. Doing something that you wouldn't normally do if you were single or you were just on your own. And it's something out of your comfort zone, or it's something that you really wouldn't really want to devote much time of it really in your life if you had a choice kind of thing. Be careful of starting to do something like this if it's unsustainable in the long term just for this person. Because ultimately they're going to realize, or you're going to realize, oh, I can't keep this up, I can't do it. And then you're going to stop and they're going to go, Wait a minute, you used to do this all the time, but you don't do it anymore. What's going on? Hmm. Well, you would understand. You'd feel the same way if they did the same thing to you, right? Hmm. Okay, so so for me, um, my particular thing, like something I've never done and I've very been, been very careful to do in the, this relationship I'm in now and past relationships too is cooking. I can't cooking. It's not because I'm lazy. I mean, I try to eat very healthily, but what I do eat is very, very basic, very, very simple. Nothing complicated, nothing that's going to take two hours. I really, I couldn't give a rat's ass for that. I mean, I, I'd be happy eating fruit and nuts for dinner, you know, or, or I don't know, uh, bits of bread and butter with cheese. I'm happy with that. Or, you know, some cold meat from the fridge and a tomato. You know, and then I'm full. I'm like, okay, I've had enough. But like making a whole spread, you know, like back of 50s, back in the 50s, that, you know, like sort of housewife cooking, Martha Stewart. I swear you are signing yourself up for a life of drudgery if you do that. And if your relationship begins to become... If that becomes a foundation of your relationship, you are signing yourself up to a life of just doing exactly that over and over and over again. And it's not going to end. Because that's the now what that person expects, because that's what you were doing in the beginning. And that was a, a big attraction to them. That's what made them 
And one of the things that made them want to stay with you, right, was that thing that you were doing. But you weren't doing it for yourself, you were doing it for them. How long can you keep it up? How long can you keep it up and be happy? And keep that smile on your face. Yeah, so for me, it's cooking. Like, I have never lied to anybody. I've been very honest. I've always said I can't stand cooking. I do the bare minimum. I do the bare basics. My child in particular, I mean, since birth, she's really fussy, really picky. And at the end, like, I'm a full-time working mom. Full-time working mom. I don't have time to come home and make two different meals, like one for her and one for me. So what I do is I get home, I see, what is it that she wants to eat? Fine, I'll make whatever she wants to eat, give it to her. When that's done, if there's any leftovers, I'll eat that, or then I'll just pick from the cupboard. Because I do not have the time, the energy, or the wherewithal to go and start cooking another meal for the adult. I've just got enough to make for her. I'll sort myself out somehow. I mean, I'm still here, I'm still okay. And then have free time to read my book, or watch a show, or get into something I'm interested in. Life should not all be about just total food paper all the time. It makes me go balmy. Cooking is a big thing. I just can't, no. In in my mind, actually, I mean, I have this child. I've raised this child. Our home's in pretty good order. Um, I'm, I'm working full time. If a person or a man is interested in me, I think actually maybe he could bring the cooking skill to the table that would be great that would make my life so much easier okay so be careful of starting something that you can't continue or you wouldn't want to continue don't change yourself so much just to start dating someone just to get them attracted think of it this way um ultimately that thing that you start doing to attract them but it's actually not you is false advertising on your part it's false advertising same like with, uh, I don't know, if you, makeup. Like for me, God, makeup. Makeup's a lot of hard work. Makeup it takes a lot of time to apply in the mornings and then in the evenings you have to clean it off. And at, at the end of the day, a person is seeing something that's not really you. And then if you do it all the time, they get used to that piece of that work that you, you create, that piece of work, artistic work that you create as your face. And then what do they really think about you when they see you on Saturday morning, when you wake up and you're all like, mm. and they're like, that's not the person I started dating. You know, like, so be careful of this kind of thing. Be careful of things that you don't really want to continue indefinitely. It's your time in your life as well. You need to think of how do you want to be spending your time? Okay. Um, yeah, so that was point number four. Point number five. Uh, I'm kind of sad about this one. Be wary of doing, doing them favors or nice things. Because a large portion of, I think, male society have a gender norm, a gender idea. That men, that women should be taking care of them, supplying for them, doing for them. And they very quickly take something that you thought what you were doing as a favor or something nice for the day, they can very quickly take it on as a given. Oh, this is just what you do. They can very quickly take it for granted or take it as, oh, this is, this is part of what you're doing for me. This is part of the deal. Be so careful of doing that. It's sad because, you know, you you, you want to, like, come out and spoil someone. You know, like, I think it's okay to do that with your friends, like girlfriends. You can bring them something or show them something or do something for them. And they're like, oh, thank you. That's so nice of you. That's awesome. But I've noticed there's a certain spectrum of men that just very quickly, like, you know, like, you start doing, you, you do a little thing for them and they're like, yeah. This is the way it should be. Oh, it's so exhausting. <laughs> like, you know, it's it's quite sad. <laughs> I've always 
I've always wondered who I would wind up with, but recently I've just been thinking, like, is it worth it? It, it takes so much time and energy. And then once you have it, is it turning out the way you'd like it? I don't know. Um, so that was number five. Be wary of doing nice things that they could very easily take for granted. I don't think women would do. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not on that 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 side. This hasn't been my perspective, but in my in my experience, uh, men can seem to take things for granted very quickly. Yeah. Uh, six. You may not like this. Six, don't count on a romantic relationship to be happy. Don't count on a romantic relationship or to be in a couple to be happy. Very frequently, it does not bring happiness. Maybe some couples have got it right. That's amazing. They found each other. They, they fit. They respect each other. They... You know, they, they go along with each other's wishes. They respect each other's wishes. They don't dismiss each other. Um, I've been, you might have noticed, I'm, I'm sort of teetering on the brink. I don't know if, if I can do this myself. So this is why I'm doing this. I mean, to offer support and ideas or help to anyone who's also maybe in the same situation. Maybe it helps you to work through your own feelings and, thoughts about where you are in your relationship or not um i was thinking recently like there's that i in a, in a previous video i talked about domestic slide domestic slide it's a it's a phrase i've come up with basically to describe when a man is fantastic in the beginning and he helps with household chores he does equal share of household labor and domestic activities but then over time it sort of teeters off and the woman winds up usually doing 60 to 70 percent more over the general course of time the domestic slide that's what i call that i was thinking like how, what is it exactly that would stop this from happening like what what do we do? What do we need to do? What needs to happen for a man to really listen to you, respect what you say, and apply it, and not go back into domestic side, not backslide, not kind of go, oh, you know, let's just leave it kind of thing, path of least resistance. What, what needs to happen for for you know for us not to have to nag? And then I thought about it. It seems unrelated, but it, I think it is. You know, when, when men join the military, uh, maybe even parents send their, their boys off to go join the military because the child needs to learn self-discipline or they need to learn discipline. They need to have someone bellowing at them, a big, strong, broad-shouldered man who could rip your arms off if he felt like it, bellowing in your ear to wake up, get out of bed, make your bed and brush your teeth. That's what men need to get each other in line how on earth do we expect ourselves to get them in line they're the bigger ones they're the stronger ones they sound louder than we do they have the man voice right they got the man voice and that carries a lot of weight how on earth do we as women expect a man to follow what we say if they themselves have to scream and shout and look like freaking warriors in front of each other, bellowing and giving orders, almost insulting each other to get things done in the military. Men can, if they're not in the military, maybe they, you know, through conditioning, they manage to, to keep that discipline. But is, is that up to us to, to reproduce the same thing? Do we have to become drill sergeants? Do you want to become a drill sergeant? I don't know if I, 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 I that's a lot of energy to go into that. You know, that, I mean, I, I can't be a drill sergeant. I can't be a big, broad-shouldered Marine 
bellowing at, at whoever I'm with to sort his to sort his his deal out to get on to to toe the line and to pull his weight. I don't have the time. I have a child. I don't have the time or the energy or the wherewithal in the day to be doing that. But that's what men respond to. They're all whether they they pack animals. They they listen to their you know the guy with the most status. Not generally the the lady, or unless maybe she has she has leadership status above him. So this is where I'm at. I I just I can't. I know I can't do the drill sergeant, and I'm also very averse to nagging. I mean, I, I just, what I'd really like is, you know, just like with my girlfriends, like if we were together, we just help each other, sort stuff out, you know, then it's done and we can all relax. Why can't the same apply from men to women? It just, there just doesn't seem to be that respect, that regard there. And I don't know if it's a biological thing or a DNA level thing. But, I mean, the military is there for a reason, right? They have these techniques and they work for a reason. Because that, that's what men respond to. I can't re reproduce that at home. There's no way. But I'm also, I also know for a fact that I'm not tolerating this domestic slide thing, this phenomenon. I know a lot of women tolerate it and put up with it before the sake of the children because they want a balanced environment for the children they want a mom a dad and then the man probably knows this in the back of his head subconscious he knows this he knows she's sticking around she's you know she feels she needs to stay okay so you know no one's going to come and beat me up no one's going to come and discipline me there's not going to be any repercussions there's no uh, punishment for me just chilling out. So in this, this dynamic, this situation, this is not working out for women because it means high energy production. Where's your time going? And what is that doing to your relationship? So this is, this, this is where I feel like you need your financial independence. You need to have your own place to get away from it or if they're at yours you can say listen I think it's time you went over to yours for a bit I'll see you maybe next week next month next year have a think about what's going on when you're ready to comply with what needs to be done here we'll see you back here I'm happy with doing that I'm okay with doing that I can't do drill sergeant but I can do that I can work at being financially independent I can um, have my own place and then I can stipulate I can be very clear about what needs to happen when when you're here these things need to happen and if they're not here then okay we'll, we'll see you later yeah see you later you can do everything with a smile on your face because I think that's that's also the thing it, it's very w difficult for women to to be serious with men, uh, men are uh, a lot of the time. Uh, many of them are very. What's the word? Quite fragile. Those egos are easily shattered. They're quite fragile, and they don't like it when women get angry with them, right? Men don't like it when women get angry with them, even if it's uh, justifiable, perfectly justifiable that she's that angry. They don't like it, and it's almost like they just sort of they dissociate. Oh. So they don't like it and sometimes they, they don't really take it on board. Like you're talking, but they're not really taking it in. They don't take it seriously. Like how do you deal with that? What do you have to do to have them take you seriously? Well, maybe the thing is you like I might have mentioned before in another video, let's stop doing things. Just stop, put your feet up, and make sure you're financially independent and make sure you have your own place because those two things are your biggest bargaining chips. Biggest, biggest bargaining chips. Yes, I'm going to stop there. I hope this has helped. Uh, I have come to this realization through these realizations. I've come to these realizations through years of dating and actually quite a lot of 
uh, advice from my mum, actually. My mum, who's been married to my dad for over 35 years, she's given me a lot of advice. Oh, also, one of the biggest, biggest, biggest tips is listen to your instinct. Listen to your inner voice or your gut feeling. That gut feeling, that stomach feeling of something's right or something's wrong, that's the most important thing. Whatever anyone else is saying out there, mm -mm, this voice first, this voice first, because that one's looking out for you. Other people might be saying things that sound like they're looking out for you, but you have no guarantee of really knowing that. Your gut instinct, your, your voice, your intuition, that's the best thing that you can listen to. So I would say that's probably five, six, seven, seven tips for, for dating for women. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it's helping.